The best fights on paternity court. We wasn't together. Oh, we wait, break up time. so much. We break up, break up so up, much. You mess with a guy you just met, fool. You no, let me tell you something. You call me a liar. Uh oh, 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 you, uh, oh, you flaring up? You need to settle. No, I feel offended by that. You flaring up? Deep breath, settle down, or you're not going to get the answer you need today. Here's the toss for the classic case of cheating paternity peeps. Some people learn it my way, but some people learn it the hard way. Meet Miss Martin, who admitted to making a significant mistake around the time she conceived her daughter. Now she stands across from her fiance. Oh boy, to prove the child's paternity. Feels like someone's guilty. Me and Romeo have no relationship because of the paternity of our daughter. I made one mistake back in the past that he knew about it. Now he's claiming that he knows nothing about it. The relationship is Not in turmoil. Yes, he completely moved out of the bedroom. Like, he lives in my living room. Okay. Well, in my opinion, I believe Miss Martin's just lucky that he moved out of the bedroom. Not her life. <laughs> but after that, we'll just figure it out in a little while. However, Mr. Pinner did express his love for the baby and his desire to claim her as his own. But the conditions there, he was ready to leave Miss Martin if the paternity results turned out to be negative. At the point in time, Romel was doing him, as we say, partying, not coming home. I completely moved to Wisconsin with him. I even said, if you know, if I come up here for you, I'm about you, we're gonna do our family thing. And when I got up there, it went totally left. That's he like true, left me in the home by myself. That's It'd be true. days at a time before I even saw Romel. <laughs> Oh, man. After this testimony, one thing was clear. Their relationship was in turmoil, as the trust in the relationship has been shattered. But according to Mr. Pinner, all of the things and details are missing from the storyline that the cheating fiancé just expressed. So how about we focus on that for a refresher? Oh, After she found out that lying. she was pregnant a month later, she said, well, no. I have something to tell you. I had sex with somebody, I had a party, and I woke up, Romeo, I, really? I, I, I know I don't know if I had unprotected sex or not. And I don't Romeo, really? really know who the guy was. No. And I asked her, I said, who do you have sex with, blank man? Because really? how do you not know who you slept with? All right, man, it feels like the judge has now opened a Pandora's box of emotions. And Mr. Pinner was full of emotions and was also full of clothes packed with bags. However, we all know one thing. If you can't remember the name or face of the person you slept with, you are very irresponsible. He said, we'll just put this behind us so we can continue and go forward. And I'm like, OK. He agreed to move forward. That's not true, Your Honor. And I agree. you're lying. It's true that I agreed to move forward after finding out that you was so irresponsible oh, to have sex with somebody and not know who it is. But hmm. Whose version of the truth do you believe? The next day after it happened, or the month after it happened? In my opinion, it all happened with whom? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Pinner. And by the look of his emotions, he may be chanting the truth. But what happened to once vibrant love? Listen, 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 listen. I already know what's going on here. I mean, it, it, this is easy. She moves to a different state, following behind you. When she gets there, you still out and about doing things. Then she get mad and get upset and decide, you know what, now I'm gonna try to go tit for tat. He out partying, he out hanging out, he don't wanna come home. According to the plaintiff, AKA the party drinker, Mr. Pinner participated in the pregnancy for about three or four months until the paternity question came swinging in like a Beyblade. <laughs> but by that time, the defendant had already distanced himself from the person he planned on saying, I do, I do, I do. It took all I had to pack up my daughter, me being pregnant, and all my clothes to go home to leave this man. And it you took think all I'm I had. To leave her after you I didn't just wake up one morning on a no. I'm gonna leave Romeo today. No, it took me. all I had. She didn't have the audacity or the care to tell me. I'm yeah, I begged you. See please. the thing about it is, no, yeah, I know I did oh, wrong. I, I know I did wrong. wrong. Oh boy. And on that note, how about we just fast forward to the question: Who's the daddy? In an attempt to bring the lost love back to their relationship, or maybe not. Judge Lake pulled out the concealed envelope, and now it was time for some DNA sprinkling. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Pinner, you are the father. Ooh. I'm sorry. It's I'm over. Sorry. I'm so it sorry. It's finally over. I'm so sorry. The good old husband-wife clash, right? Well, getting a break from your wife is common, but what are the odds of getting cozy with another woman during that time? Oh, man. Miss Brown claims that Mr. Shinoster got her pregnant during a break from his wife and has consistently denied being the father of her six-month-old daughter. He right. lies about everything, Your Honor. To Who married oh, us? Can I talk? Can I see the Can paperwork? I talk? What paperwork? Exactly. I ripped it up. Was it email? I ripped it up. I'm you not talking. Where were you? Where were you when I got married? Wasn't you wasn't around, exactly. So when were you when I but conceived I mean, my daughter? You wasn't around. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What in the world? 
Well, number one, everything went up a notch real quick. Number two, the woman dressed like a rose is Mr. Shinoster's wife. But what's happening is why will someone marry a man who's already married? Unless they lied about their marital status. Ah, something's ticking in my thoughts. How did you marry him if he already had a wife? We met through a mutual friend, which we basically had a long distance type of relationship. We talked on the phone, we Facebooked, all of that. So we don't court, we meet, we get married. That's how it goes. Okay, now that's messed up. I mean, come on. How could you just marry the man over the phone? Isn't that just crazy? But the unique union was based on their religious beliefs, not a legally binding marriage. But why is Mr. Shinoster denying the marriage part? Let's find out. I'm all curious now. When I walked in, the kid's like, hey, Abu, hey, Abu. Abu is father. Two minutes later, she comes out of the back. She no longer looks like a Muslim. She has on a little shirt and some tights on, and she's walking up the, the aisle, hiking What's them up that? like this, so I can see Let's her private parts. Oh, boy. Now isn't that one hell of a story? But let me just confirm, who says Muslims can't wear skirts? And just stop doing that leg pose, Mr. Shinoster. You look just like Papa Smurf. However, with that testimony, things instantly got heated. Here's the juicy part. Well, when I seen that, the only thing I could think about doing was mm -hmm. going to get a bottle of Henny because it was on and popping now. Thank now you. can That's I it. talk? There wasn't you. nothing else going on. I was not going to marry her. You look like a man anyway. Shut up. What I'm trying to understand is, is marriage or no marriage, you still say you had sex with her. Yes. Yeah. Let's just keep all of that aside and understand the fact of marriage or not marriage. They both have been playing in the sheets, right? And FYI, Mr. Shinoster, you admitted to that part, didn't you? Just rewind your memory, playmate, and see if you can provide even some more information on this. Mr. Shinoster, how long did this relationship last with Ms. Brown? 48 hours. He lied so, about every single I got there on a Friday, I left Sunday. Set. So, Mr. Shinoster, you said after that, I, that was I the end of the relationship? That was, that was it. I've, I've never seen her again. Miss Brown and Mr. Shinoster were in a relationship, which ended approximately six weeks before Miss Brown became intimate with another man. Ah, now that's a question out of the loud noise. Mr. Shinoster disputes the timeline and claims he did not meet the other man until after he had met Miss Brown. I didn't even meet him until after I met you, first of all. And if you he was her father, you met me. why would I have a problem so would you with him six weeks that after that? father if I'm with him? You have yet to see my child. She's six months. So, Miss Brown, has he seen Blessing? Never. never seen her in person, never, never touched her, never kissed her, nothing. He never. treat my daughter like she's nothing. Can you believe all that? So before we offended anyone else or make anyone feel overwhelmed by all the yelling and gaslighting, how about we just focus on the DNA results to put an end to this messed up paternity doubts? So are you all ears, Mr. Shinoster? Cause we are. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Shinoster, you are the father. That's your baby. That's a beautiful little girl. She deserves her daddy. Not somebody standing up talking about, she ain't mine, she ain't this. Innocent babies don't deserve that. I know she's my daughter now. That won't happen. Having a childhood sweetheart can be amazing, unless and until they become a headache. And wanna know how? Yep, that's right. It's all about denying paternity. Now for this case, we have Miss Watkins seeking acknowledgement of her one-month-old child, Mr. Washington. So Miss Watkins, why do you think Mr. Washington is denying your son? He's ready to start his rap career, and that's stopping him from wanting another child. And I'm a good person, and I just want to do the right thing. If she's not 100% sure that I'm the father, how am I supposed to be 100% sure that I'm the father? You got to make this situation make sense, Your Honor. All right, our defendant here plans on becoming another Tupac of the 21st century. A rap career? <laughs> but what do you think, Miss Watkins? That his dream is the reason for not accepting the baby? I mean, like, can you look at Kanye? Oh, I forgot. Sorry, man. Yeah, just recently. So wait, there. you were childhood yeah. friends? Yes. And then at some point, you all became boyfriend and girlfriend, were no, intimate, what, what? We talked when we were younger, and then I just moved down here, found out she was staying here, so we ended up being connected, He knew talking, I was staying here when he talking, came down here. Honor. He knew we was down here. Oh, wow, what a wonderful addition to my vocabulary. Well, young people do have catchy slang to name everything. But never mind. Miss Watkins and Mr. Washington had a history of being close friends, but drifted apart as they grew older. However, they reconnected when Miss Watkins moved to the area, 
and their relationship took a beneficial turn. Was he your only buddy? So before he got down here, I was with my firstborn's father. As soon as he got down here and we started messing around, I was no longer messing around with like him. It was like actually like month and a half. So you're admitting that you had a previous relationship that basically ran all the way up into the time you reconnected with Mr. Washington. That's correct, Your Honor. Miss Watkins addressed Mr. Washington's doubts and explained that she had never told him definitively that he was the father. She admitted that her initial uncertainty had contributed to his doubts. However, she insisted that the only other potential father was her firstborn's father, refuting any claims of promiscuity. And I said, Jamillion, I'm pregnant. I don't know how far along I am, but once I get my due date, I'll let you know. So but when you say to a man, I understand. I'm pregnant. Yes, I understand. And I don't know how far along I am, and when I find out, I'm gonna let you know that is paternity doubt. Why is this woman giggling so much? Is she really proud of what she's done? And how can the defendant stand so calm? Ms. Watkins then attempted to deliver a medical lecture, explaining her medical proof on why she believes that the defendant in braids is the father. Same lips, same nose, Your Honor, and the same pretty eyelid, very small. They look identical, Your Honor. When he was born, he had hairs on his legs that you could not miss. Dominion explained to me while I was pregnant that him and his kids came out with hair mainly on their legs and their butt. My son has hair on his legs and his butt. Well, Judge Lake does have her way around the sarcasm. And just like that, we don't really believe what the plaintiff had just said. How about we call in for some experts to connect the dots in our heads? Time for the actual science lecture. Volume up, paternity peeps. There's not a genetic trait for it, but Scandinavian backgrounds, it tends to happen more likely. And then in families that have had it, there's a slight increased chance, but not a gene that's related directly to pyloric stenosis. Oh, wow, so no gene. Not that's been identified. Why is it that every time we go looking for some clarity, we end up further complicating things? So this time around, we're now looking for some concrete evidence. And y'all know where we can find it, the DNA envelope. Mr. Washington, you are the father. <laughs> it's a beautiful little boy, and that's you, your, your little Honor. boy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna step up. Like, I have no problem, like, taking him with me, picking him up, doing all of that. I just wanted to know if the baby was actually mine, Your Honor. Mr. Lovett was accusing Miss Jackson of being a manipulative cheater. He claims that she flaunted her affairs during their stormy relationship, leading him to doubt his paternity of their 15-month-old son, Corey Jr. Miss Jackson, in her defense, dismisses Mr. Lovett's doubts as baseless insecurities and insists that he is indeed Corey Jr.'s father. He didn't take the relationship seriously. He was talking to other women, so being that he didn't take it seriously, I didn't take it seriously. He was talking to other women and I were talking to other guys. And so you all got together briefly and then one started cheating and the other one started cheating. Yes. Mr. Lovett, in a moment of tenderness, claimed his love for the child, believing to be the baby daddy. Well, things can always stay that smooth. However, Miss Jackson contradicts him, reminding the court that he initially denied paternity due to the child's different appearance compared to their other son. Why do y'all keep doing that? So Mr. Lovett, are you accusing Miss Jackson of cheating in defense of your own cheat. Exactly. No. Do you think she's doing exactly. it to get back at you? No. Do you she... think she's doing it because you're doing it? No. So how do you know she's even doing that? She's just a type of Assuming. woman that moves Assuming. on. Look, she started having kids at the age of 18. Oh man, it becomes evident that the relationship between Mr. Lovett and Miss Jackson was far from stable. Both parties confessed to talking to other people during their brief time together, and the accusations fly like daggers. What a toxic atmosphere. Just listen to how the doubt developed. He approached the house. We had gotten into an altercation and he packed all his things and he left. Then he came back. When he came back, of course, she got a lot of kids. I was sitting outside. Out Me and the guy were sitting outside on the back of his truck. He had just That's finished cutting my grass. I painted and took my time with sitting on the back of the truck having a cold drink. Ex. If he would have cut the grass when he was there a couple days ago, another guy wouldn't have to. But if you think that's the climax of Mr. Jackson's doubts, here's another layer of complexity to the story. Miss Jackson's marital status. She's been separated from her husband, Mr. Coleman, for four years. Legal complications have prevented them from obtaining a divorce as they have both ventured into new relationships. 
My bad, families. Why don't you think Corey Jr. is your son? I got you was involved with another guy. That's what I need to know. At the time Corey Jr. was conceived, you believe Miss Jackson was involved with someone else. Right. I know that she went out with another guy, and I know she was chilling with another guy at the time we broke up. It was no baby around. Then some time go later, now you're pregnant. According to Mr. Lovett, the defendant has been playing baby mama ever since she was 18. What? Seems like we just had a run into a pattern. But who's going to identify it if Miss Jackson wasn't willing to admit anything? Just listen to the plaintiff once again to shed some clarification. She got pregnant again by another guy. And then you turn around and get pregnant by but he, What he's trying to Every say is... Every year since you've been 18... I already baby, had a child baby, between baby, the marriage baby, baby, before baby. him. So when you first got pregnant, I would have been divorced. You can't get divorced because you keep getting pregnant. <laughs> exactly. Not, exactly. Not by me, man. Exactly. I mean, just forget it. Hold that thought right there, folks. And how about we call in Mr. Coleman to sprinkle us with some new perspective on how the relationship he had with Miss Jackson, because by far, Mr. Lovett has been chanting the same tone. Let's move to the witness box. How long have you been married to Miss Jackson? Six years. Six years. Separated for four years. In your mind, is there any chance you are Corey Jr.'s biological father? No, you are. I just had two beautiful twins. I'm just waiting for my divorce for them two to get their self together so I could finally have my divorce. Okay, with enough testimony on the plate, it was now time for Judge Lake to resolve the paternity triangle. So before we listen to some more emotional backlash, how about we just focus directly on the results and see if someone did more than just mowing the lawn. <laughs> it has been oh determined God. by this court. It seems so unreal. <laughs> Oh my God. Mr. Lovett, you are Ariel's father. <laughs> <laughs>